Hey, baby. Look what I got for our favorite girl. Mother... Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, oh, you oh, you oh, 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 shit. You're getting married on Saturday? What was oh, all that shit oh, you said hey, to me? Right. Stephanie, stop! I can explain! You said you love me! I do! Oh. Oh. I hope you die! Oh. Stop it, Stephanie! Fuck face! You two! Me? <laughs> Hey everybody, it's frickin' Shack Out Back and Jim is tired as fuck. I feel like we haven't recorded in a long time. It's been a long time between last episode and this episode, it feels it's like. It's been like two and a half weeks or something. That's wild. It's yeah, we're recording this one late. I was in a, I'll get into it, but I was in like a guest You were in a dust cloud. And stuff. Yeah, I was in the, the dust strip. It wasn't a great time, but I'm back now. Uh, it's episode something of Shack Up. Something no numbers number, anymore. it's like 30 something, but yeah, this episode's going to be called uh, something with sideways in the title. Sideways, upside down, inside out, something like that. Yeah. Uh, we, we were talking about the 2003 or four film Sideways today, uh, a, a favorite of old of Gombus's, old Jim B. Yeah, I didn't know you liked it that much, Jim. It's a good movie. I, Dan, I Dan laughed at it. Today. Dan said, ha ha, feelings, and he, and then he <laughs> said, ha ha, ha ha. So we're going to talk about that today. But uh, yeah, this is Shack Out Back. I'm at Popeye Birkin. The other guy is at Dan I'm Sama at now. I'm Dan Sama, and I am Danny. Yeah, and this is a book club of sorts. We talk about something different every other week, just whatever our interests are, whatever we want to talk about. And we said we're talking about Sideways this week, so we're going to go right into, I think, Dan, no no, no fat this week. We're cutting out the fat this week. What right now mean? we're going to the bi-weekly breakdown. We're just going in. Tell me, bi-weekly breakdown. You go, Dan. Bi-weekly breakdown. Uh, my apartment got an HVAC installed, so I had to x out of the apartment for like five days or something. We were staying in the guest suite. And that means no computer. That meant no Elden Ring. Uh, I played Elden Ring this morning, though, so I was good again. That meant no Deep Rock, no uh, no hanging out. I just watched a lot of anime. We hung out. Well, we hung out. Yeah, it was different. Oh, it wasn't in our apartment. Yeah, we played uh, Terraforming Mars, right? Yeah, we did. And it was a good-ass time. Good. Me good and Brandon went over. We bought some beards, and we went over, and we played Terraforming Mars with Danny and Cassie. And uh, yeah, I, I beat Brandon, which I enjoyed <laughs> by a couple of points. Brandon got so lucky. So Bra- there's this like OP Brandon card. Brandon was making cash. Yeah, but there was this OP card that Dan brought out the first turn. He was like, okay, this is the OP card. You're not going to get it. And you have to have a certain whatever to play it. But Brandon's power was to like play whatever card first whenever. So it was like this fish card that just compounded victory points the a entire point time. every single turn. Yeah. I think he ended with like 13 points on that card alone. It was very, yeah. very good. Yeah. That's um, the only reason why you got close, Brandon, you fuck. <laughs> Other than that, I, uh, yeah, it also meant I couldn't really play board games that much. I wanted to play some bigger games, but I could only kind of bring over one. So I brought Terraforming Mars because I knew the gang was coming over. It's, it's, a been, good time. it's been kind of uh, boring, though. That that constituted about a week of my life. And now I finally, we got back two days ago. I, we cleaned everything. It was Everything had a little layer of dust on it. Oh my goodness, it was a lot of work, but it's finally pretty much back together. I'm sitting at the computer again. I uh, I swapped over which side my tower's on. It feels nice. I'm feeling good. Dan lost about a foot of space above his head, so I, I was wondering yeah. if he ever bonked his head on the vent above him now. No, it's not that sure. It does feel a little bit like it's it's bearing down on me, but it's nice. It looks nice. They like filled it and everything nice. We're just waiting until they say, you know, we need to charge you more for rent because of the construction, the niceties we've been doing. But I got it in an email. They're not charging us more from our HVAC, so. That's good. Yeah, ho- hopefully it actually is a thing. What else have you been doing? Um, Truthfully, it's been kind of kind of slow. I watched a ton of anime. I started Overlord, and I watched Overlord Season 1, and I'm almost done Season 2. Uh, I keep on checking when my Great Western Trail 2nd Edition copy is coming in, Jim. And... I'm excited for that. I'm excited to beat Cassie oh, again. I don't know when it's coming in. Apparently Canada's having bad distribution problems with it. Um, did I... I think between last episode and this episode, I went to LA Mood and I traded a bunch of Magic cards and I got like $250 in yeah. store credit, which was wild. 
me and you went on a big long walk one day and oh, you went yeah. over to la mood and back but you didn't trade your cards i did in not then. trade in then you got a crazy amount of money back for that year. yeah and it was just like two cards that caught con- it was only like 15 or 20 cards if that but it was two cards that constituted like over 50 percent of that price and they'll drop in price though i don't really care about magic anymore i'm not gonna sell my decks or anything those are like nice memories i have and i spent time making them and they're fun but uh yeah i kind of look at those magic singles and i'm like you know what if they're worth money i sold those cards and i got terraforming mars expansions that i will use way more than i've ever given a shit about those singles so yeah very very worthwhile but other than that it's been kind of nice i uh i'm reading my book I'm having your, a S- your your skip book right what about your skip book yeah the uh an- there is no anti-memetic division jim you said you started it right i there was like a there was like the first 20 or 30 pages free oh, like on the free Google. one yeah, yeah. It, is... it, it seemed it was, it was good it was good uh the, the author had a good tone it, yeah I it. it's interesting it's very very weird they've introduced like three characters multiple times and every time they introduce them it's their first day on the office it's very, very every weird. time. They, oh, that's funny. Every, every time they'll be like, like, it'll be an entire chapter. And then the ending, it'll be like, oh, all this is happening. My first day at the office. And it's like, how many times has she been doing this? It's really, it's almost existential horror in a way. Yeah, Essentially, well, that's, there's like, that's what most of SCP yeah, is about. Especially that shit. There's something that's tracking down the anti-memetic division and erasing all memories of a certain person so it's like wiped out entire hundreds of people but they never existed in anyone's minds who've ever known them so their bodies are just rotting on the floor but no one can see them and flies don't notice them it's really fucking weird dan you do not recognize the bodies in the water Uh, i read that one too have you ever read that scp yeah that one's fucked it's cool it's a really really good one markiplier wrote that i think (laughs) uh you finished (laughs) yeah i'm done jim tell me what's up tell me what you've been Uh, doing jimbo he watched uh matrix 4 with his roommates he watched, you watched the new pieces. matrix yeah so it, it's not good right <laughs> and no but my 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 roommates did like i came down i didn't watch the whole thing but i came down and my roommates were like they were looking at it and they had like yeah. like they just smelled bad cheese face on <laughs> and i'm like you know that's supposed to be a comedy right like one of the like whoever i, I think it was Lena wachowski Lena yeah. wachowski made it because she didn't want to do a matrix movie so she made it a parody that's so fucking like, funny and they're like oh and they watched it and then they finished it and i watched the ending with them and they're like oh fuck you know i really enjoyed that now that it was just like a big fuck you to warner brothers i'm like yeah that's the best that's way to look really at it. fucking funny uh me and you watched 30 days a night when i went over to we'll play that board game with you and you said it was going to be a really good movie jim it's and, good and i didn't i i didn't really like it that much. oh my god jim hates 30 days of night i didn't hate it i think it had good aspects to it but it was one of those movies just like gore porn to me like there wasn't a lot of like characters or good writing and stuff like that and it was kind of a goofy film but like there's some good parts where like a guy runs over vampires with a big chainsaw in front of a backhoe and that was really good I just, it's one of those movies from my childhood. That <laughs> I've Dan pro- was five. They plopped him in front of 30 days a night. Okay. So here, li- listen to this. This is the setting. It's my ba- It's my parents' house. It's the basement. My dad has a copy of 30 days of night on DVD on the like shelf and it's face up and I see it for years and years and years. It sits there and I always look at it. And then I finally watched it one day, probably in like grade eight. And I was like, that was really weird. And then I, I probably watched that movie, Jim. I'm not lying to you. I probably watched it five or six times, maybe. <laughs> That's okay. Like, there's some movies like that that I don't think are very good movies. And I like them. Like, there's the the American remake of Dark Water with Jennifer Connelly. I like that movie a lot. And yeah. I've watched it, like, five or six times. It's not a good fucking movie. <laughs> uh, I was modding Fallout 4. And yes, you and Brandon you were, were getting pissed God. at me. <laughs> I was... Popeye Bark is playing Fallout 4. Popeye Bark is now playing Fallout 4 for fucking 50 times. Well, when you ha- when you p- install... So I purged all my mods because <laughs> something was wrong with my copy of Fallout 4. So I purged them all and I was reinstalling like 45 mods or something. And so every time you do a mod, Dan, you, you install the mod, boot the game, make sure nothing's broken. Okay, t- close the game down, install a mod, boot the game. Horrible. That's what you have to do. And uh, I finished the three quest mods that I wanted to do. It was Ellen the Cartographer, the, the Machine and Her, and Vault 4. And they're all really good like content that the community made, community made mods. And then I uninstalled it because I don't want to play that fucking game again. Uh, <laughs> the, the fucking base game in that sucks. The story is fucking shit, Dan. 
Yeah. And uh, Nightmare Reaper 1.0 came out. Oh, yes, it did. Yeah, and they I've added on my wish list. so much good stuff, Dan. Oh, my God. They added, like boss enemies and more like mini games to play and more things to explore and it more guns really, and... really good i Fuck, watched uh, so nice. i watched civvy's video on it and i also watched uh, g-man's video on it today uh, i've been watching my name is earl with my oh, uh, so good with my roommates and i fucking love my name is oh earl. my name is earl fucking kid. kills me i love it, it it is such a good show and i realize why i like it so much and why me and my roommates like it so much is that it treats every character with respect like oh. every character, the main character's name is literally Earl Hickey. That's his fucking name. <laughs> Earl and he's a J. doofus. Hickey. And they're all doofus characters like Patty the Daytime Hooker. And like everyone's a very exaggerated characterization of something. But like they don't say that these people are bad or like morally wrong or no, like bad never. people or something. They're just like people who you explore and enjoy and all that stuff. That's what I really like about that show. And it's deadly funny. Oh, can I just say, a scene that I always remember from, I don't know why it's stuck in my head so much, I really like the episode where they get stranded in their car in, like, the middle of nowhere, and the AC's broken, and Randy's sitting in the car trying to fish peanuts out of the air vent. <laughs> I, lo- I think I like that scene a lot, and I remember it exactly how it goes. I love it. We, we just watched the one where uh, Earl went back for Mother's Day to spend Mother Day's, Mother's Day with his mom. And then he had stolen a car from his dad when he was a kid and like got lost in a drag yeah. race. And then he won it back and brought it back. And his dad was like, I, wa- I bought that car for you to have for you to have when you were 16. You got rid of it. So you cu- you got like you cheated yourself out of the car. <laughs> and then the whole episode is like him and his dad are fixing the car. And that's what he cheated himself out of is spending quality time with his dad. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is such a fuck. I love this show. Jim said his name really is Earl. I watched some documentaries, a couple of them. They were all on assisted suicide because I thought it was interesting. I watched... Oh, um, yeah, I think you were talking about that. Yeah, yeah, the guy who wrote the Discworld novels, um, Terry Pratchett, when he was was diagnosed with um, dementia before he died, he went and, and literally went with someone who went to Sweden and died. And I watched the man oh, die really? in the documentary. And it's very, uh, very interesting. I enjoyed watching it a lot. It's, uh, would it be, is it, I'm going to guess it's intravenous. It's like a thing they pump into your veins no you drink something oh really oh i didn't know that they can't do that well with uh, i think in canada because we have assisted suicide you have to be really sick and the doctor will do it for you whatever but in europe it's different where some places do and some places don't and these people were from britain and they went to sweden and they say like you know you can take this but it will kill you and the person has to be cognizant enough for them to take it that's what terry pratchett was really exploring because he was had dementia and he was talking about like, well, maybe I want to do this. But if you're at the point where you can't like recognize what's going on or, or can't remember things and stuff, like you can't really take that avenue because you're, you're not there. Like you're not a, a, really a person who can decide if they want to die or not. At that yeah, point. that's fucking so, rough. That's a that's yeah. a touchy subject. Uh, Internet Historian came out with a new video yesterday. Oh my god, yeah, good. he did. I haven't watched it yet. It was on Area 51 yeah, or something. Yeah, the Naruto run stuff. It was yes. good. And yesterday, I I was cleaning, and I decided to put my, my you can hear it, my big fat CRT back in my room right next to my desk. And Finally, I've been Nightmare and stuff Reaper on, on CRT. Yeah, I put my big fat 27-inch wag here beside my desk, and I was playing Quake and different things today, and fuck, I just love CRTs, goddamn it. <laughs> uh, but, and my aunt died this week. That's the other thing that happened this week. So I was over, if I'm a little tired, I was over at my house, my parents' house today, talking to my grandmother and stuff like that. So that's what I've been dealing with too. So if I'm a little tired out and a little loopy, I've just been drinking and doing all the Catholic, you know, funeral planning and all stuff. Today. And that was so. your, your grandmother's sister? My grandmother's daughter. Oh, Jesus. She outlived her. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, that's rough. Holy. My gr- My grandmother's buried all of her sons, three sons, and now one of her daughters. Good lord. Yeah, so it's unfortunate. Pour one out for Jim's uh pour one out for Jim's family lineage. Yeah, my aunt Pat. Pour one out for my aunt. She likes Smirnoff ice, so pour one out for my aunt <laughs> she, Pat, everybody. She uh, did. I think I like Smirnoff ice. Yeah, she's a classy woman. All right, we're going on to s- sideways. So, Jim picked this movie, much like Fisher King. We did Fisher King a long time ago, like 30 episodes ago or something. Yes, awful thing. Fisher King was one of the first-ish ones. I think Fisher King was the first movie that I kind of knew what it was, but I did not know anything about this movie. 
Uh, this is a movie, yeah, just like Fisher King, this is the movie I watched in high school because I heard a bunch of people talk about it, and I really, really enjoyed it. And when I watched it, it was probably seven or eight years old the first time and now it's closer to 20 years old yeah so uh yeah this is a movie that i watched when i was younger and i really really fucking enjoyed it so why don't you give us the preamble what is what is sideways about dan sideways is about a a trying writer who is a teacher currently it's not really touched on but he's a writer he wants to be a writer he's written a big big old book him and his buddy are going on a uh bachelor party trip basically before his buddy gets married jack cole is his buddy and he, his name is miles i believe is that right jim yeah yes it is yeah and they're basically going to wine country for like one last week of not one really last partying hurrah. it wasn't yeah. yeah one last hurrah it was supposed to be just a nice relaxing week of wine drinking and hanging out before you know, it's 2004. If you're getting married, you're you're done. You have no no freedom. No <laughs> that's future. it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's how. That's all these movies. That's how they premise getting married. You you're done for life essentially. And over the course of the week, you learn that Jack is basically a dickhead. <laughs> you see, they're he's, both every every oh, character. Yeah. <laughs> both of them are fucking dickheads. That's the thing about this movie is that b- the two main characters are fucking jack Oh Christ. Yeah, Jack pretty much instead of wanting to go for one last hurrah, Jack wants to go and have one last sexual fling or a couple of them before he finally settles down. So he just wants to cheat on his wife a bunch before he finally is like, "Okay, no more cheating. I have to not cheat anymore." Yeah. And a bunch of shit happens. A bunch of weird, somber emotions happen. They all have emotions. Yeah, this is this is an emotive film. Dan and Cassie were like emotions the whole time when this was going on. Jim's Jim's crying into his hanky. He's pulling out his handkerchief and blowing his nose. (laughs) I would. I'm I'm a sappy man, Dan. I'm sorry to say. I have emotions. Jim says, "Don't you know they're not talking about wine? They're talking about them." I, I think that the melodrama in this is a little bit uh, extreme, and uh, it's a little corny in places. But oh yeah, that's not bad. I think that because the, the two main characters, Miles and Jack, are such opposites. Like Jack is such an outgoing. How the fuck are they friends? Ladies guy, like likes going around, talks about sex all the time, and Miles like he's like a neurotic little fella who just got divorced, and he's like very. Just, bro, we got divorced like proper. years ago, wasn't it? Like no, two I, years? a year, a year. A year. No. And he's very, like, self-conscious and not very self-confident and stuff. And they're best buddies for some fucking reason. Doesn't Ugh. Miles say at one point, he's he's like, he was just my college roommate. It really feels like they just kind of stuck around each other. They have nothing in common. Do you know who directed this film, Dan? God, no. Who did? So it was Alexander Payne. And Alexander Payne directed uh, The Descendants and Nebraska and Sis and Ruth and a bunch of other movies. But guess what else he directed? Jim, what what did he direct? Do you remember? So th- this is what this happened to us. This is when me and Dan we were we were working at the same job, or Dan Dan had just left the, the job, and we knew people who were at the same work and stuff. And this girl came up to me and she was like, "Jim, and I'm I'm an extra in a movie." Do you remember this? Oh my god, yes, yes, yes Jim, yes. I'm an extra in a movie. I'm like, oh yeah, what movie is it? And she's like, I don't know who it is, but the director's name is Alexander Payne. I'm like, fucking freaked out. <laughs> and she was like, they shot a bunch of movies for for Alexander shot in London or around London with this movie called um, Downsizing. Yes, and it is his least good the movie, best Matt Damon movie ever. It, right? It is a very bad film. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't sign up to be an extra in it. But I know people who are in that movie, and this is the same director who did Sideways. Downsizing that little that little part where that woman that we know was in Downsizing kills me because it's it's literally that picture of SpongeBob being like, "Hey, it's me," and it's his finger in the bottom left corner <laughs> yes. of the picture. It's, it's like, like the size of, side of her head or something. <laughs> it's the scene where they're outside at like a. It's like a the barn. end, I think. Yeah, it's very funny. But Jim, his... do you get paid to do that, or do, is it just like a? just like a cool thing call up that girl and ask i don't think so i think i feel like you wouldn't get paid i feel like you're in a shooting in an area like that like you get to meet you might get to meet like i think that's the benefits yeah you you get get like like, like a timbit you get uh you get a little coffee and you might see matt damon's shoes i I think when you're filming a film right uh a lot of like cheap movies are made in la 
uh, because it's easy to get like the rights to film in places. But when you got a green staffing... screen, all the homeless people off the streets <laughs> in LA. When you're staffing actors and stuff, if you go to like different parts of the US or into Canada, a lot of people just be like, fuck yeah, I'll be in your movie and just show up for it, right? Yeah, I can and see that. You don't that. have to pay them. Maybe I think she did get paid. I think she did get paid for it now that I'm thinking about it. How much it. did they give you? Like 50 bucks? Like, here's 50 yeah, bucks for the side a, of your head. A, a pittance. <laughs> they give but, you pity money. That's what this guy directs. He directs sh- movies about old, like older people. It's not superheroes. What are your some of your favorite uh, scenes from this film, Dan? So I, it's near the end, but uh, I like when he drinks from the spit bucket, whatever it's called, the cistern. Oh or my some god! Shit. I didn't this, realize that was a spit bucket at first. Th- this is this is one of the some of the best parts of this movie where a, a surprising action will happen, and then the, the character's reaction to it is so genuine and fucking weird <laughs> that you just can't help but laughing. Because there's two instances I can think of. Because one of my favorite moments is like. Miles and Jack are in wine country and he's Miles is talking about like the grapes or something and Jack is like yeah your ex-wife is coming to the wedding and he, and he's like yeah she got remarried and Miles sits in the car like a little fucking baby take me home take me home I don't want to go I don't want to go home take me home <laughs> I want to go back to the motel please and Jack's like I know you do this you're speaking such a baby blah, blah, blah. and he freaks out and grabs a wine bottle and starts chugging it and running down the side of a hill as Jack <laughs> runs after him. That's the second and, one I was going to say. And the scene that, that uh, you're talking about is when Miles calls his agent. They're at like a winery that, oh, that Miles yeah, didn't want to go yeah. to. Cause it's like a one of those shitty ones you go in for wine tours where a bunch of old white people it's are at. one of the them brim places. and yeah, it's all senior citizens. All white people shit. That's the kind of place they're in. And Miles calls his agent and she tells him that they're not publishing his book and they don't have any options to really get the, his book off the ground anymore he comes in he wants a drink and the guy won't give him a four glass of wine so he grabs the fucking like button it's not a, really a spit bucket it is a spit bucket but it's mostly like you just dump out the rest of your wine you don't want into it and he just like pours it on himself and chugs it oh oh it's delightful i also really really like when they're at the diner the the second diner when they get kicked basically they don't want to go back to the hitching post is that what it's called yes they're when they don't yeah when they don't want to go to the hitching post and jack meets another they're at like they're at like montana's or something yeah literally jack meets another waitress and then miles is like looking at him and jack's like she looks like she'd be a barrel of fun i'm gonna get her number and she's like some random worker from this small town and miles is just like come on really you're gonna have sex with this random woman after the whole incident with stephanie the turmoil they went through and he and and jack takes him in his arms he says you don't understand my plight (laughs) he's truly the american hero he's a man he's a man freaking you can't say the last part he's a man a w word that's what Jack is, but that's what a lot of this film is, right? And that's why I think I like it a lot, is that you you don't really... Because Miles does a lot of bad stuff during this movie. Like, in the first 15 minutes, uh, Miles takes Jack. He picks up Jack, and they go to his mother's house. And his mother's, like, talking yeah, about how she get... Yeah, what was up with that? His, his, his mother's talking about how she get back together with his ex-wife, and yada, yada, yada. And Miles literally just went there to go into a room and steal, like, a few hundred dollars, and then leave in the morning before she woke up. Yeah, what the fuck's up with that? Because then she's like, do you need some money? I was going to give you some money. And he's just like, yeah, no thanks. I'm he's good. pride. That's the thing about Miles, right? He's prideful. And I, that's what I like about this movie, too, is that it shows you instead of tells you a lot of this stuff. Yeah. I think that you were kind of like, this is corny. Because there's a scene where um, Miles and, and Jack get involved with these two women while they're there for the week in wine country. And for jack it's like this lady who likes sex it's sandra O, oh, who's a big actress in there is a canadian actress like Grey's anatomy actress. or something yeah she's another stuff too right. and he goes off and has sex and miles has this relationship with um uh virginia madsen uh, I don't name's maya her name. in the maya movie. yeah and they're talking about why they like wine and they're sitting in on like a on like a screened in porch and she's like i like that 
I think about all the different people who made the wine and and what the wine and what was going on when it was bottled and and what the journey it's been through and it tastes so good and yada 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 and you and Cassie did not like that part. <laughs> I didn't hate it, but I knew what they were doing. Jim goes after the entire spiel. Jim goes, they weren't actually talking about wine; they were talking about themselves. Yeah, as a joke, like bro. The, as Jim, a joke. Jim raises both eyes and says, tips his glasses and says, they actually aren't tip my talking fedora. about themselves in this scene yeah it was really uh it wasn't bad it wasn't the corniest thing i've ever seen it's not like it made me awkward it's, or anything it's a very like teenage gym learning about cinema language kind of scene that's yeah. why i enjoyed it it's like oh the hidden meaning behind yada yada, yada. it's like when my when i was a teenager my favorite movie was casablanca because oh, shut up Jim. it was it was bro it was and I liked it so much because it was like a classic Hollywood movie and, and, they, and they talk fast and they have a lot of quippy dialogue and stuff like that. And they don't say what they're meaning and all that shit. And uh, yeah, that, the, the kind of like pretentious gym choices back then. I do think this movie is a bit pretentious, but I, I don't dislike it because of that. I, I think like- if you go to wine country, you're a bit pretentious and that's okay. I think that's okay. Dan, we should do a road trip. We'll go to Niagara. We'll drink lots of wine. Do you like wine, Dan? I'll drink white wine. I don't really like red wine, but I like yeah. like sweet white white wine. Can we go on a Flemish sour ale tour? I, I'd like that. We're not going to go on a girls' night out tour. Is that what we're not doing? Oh, yeah. London, Ontario, and Canada's fine wine economy-based systems. <laughs> I'm sure the Niagara Falls region is known for its delectable wine. I actually do like uh, Inniskillen. I like that a lot, and I like Monarch. I think that's another Canadian one. I don't. I think me and you have the... Okay, Dan, whenever we're drinking, right? Because we were drinking on when we were playing the board game. Jim's going to say Dan always buys the coolest beers and then he hates them. <laughs> so I went to the beer store and I bought like, okay, I got a Porter and I got a Blondale and I got something else that Brandon read. Oh, I got a Jam Up of the Mash, which you really like. I got three different things. And Brandon got a few different things. We brought them. And we were drinking. And Dan always, this is what Dan always gets. He, whenever we're going camping or something like that, he'll get like six <laughs> different <laughs> sours. He'll get six different sour beers and he'll get one gem up the mash and then five things he's never fucking had before. And he'll hate. (laughs) Jim, I'm a dreamer. I like looking at them in the the LCBO and I think to myself, oh my God, this might be the one. This is the one I, I envision it my future with it. I envision buying more of them and how easy they are to obtain. And I'll I don't get, know why I'll you get just the pineapple told me. lemon sour, and then I'll drink it and say, "Jim, I don't then, think I can finish this." And then I finish it every time. <laughs> I don't know why you just don't get like four or five jam at the mashes. You know you Jim, like jam at the mash. There's something out there. There's the holy grail out there that's tucked away at the back of the LCBO store shelves. The one that I got on Saturday was good as hell. It was oh, that, really. What good. was that one called? It was called like Creek Boone. Fucking, Creek Boone. That it was, was fucking delicious. good as shit. It was like a strawberry. It tastes like a strawberry, strawberry marmalade in my sour. mouth. It's so oh. good. I'm going to get more. I'm going to get Cassie to get more. But no, knowing my luck, Jim, I'll go to the LCBO tomorrow and it's uh, out of stock. They don't deliver to Canada anymore. They made 12 See, bottles. This is what happened, right? Because I, me and Brandon decided on our whiskey. We decided on it. It was <laughs> Alberta Premium Dark Horse. Oh. I fucking love that whiskey so much. And Brandon would only buy that. He we, we drink it straight every time. Such good whiskey. They stopped selling it in Ontario. Same thing. I went camping one time and I bought a six pack. Random six pack. It was called the Strawberry Wit. And yeah, it had a little anime it. woman on it. And I'm like, oh, I'll get this. And it was the best fucking beer I've ever had. And they don't sell in, Can- in Ontario anymore. That's Jim's white whale. That's my. Those are two of my white whales. <laughs> uh, my white whale is a beer that I had called uh, Creek as Jake Obens in like 2015. That was delicious. And they don't sell it in Canada. In Canada or in Ontario? Because that's different. Canada. You have to get it in Detroit is the nearest place that sells it. Bro, we're going to Detroit. We're buying Yoo-Hoo's. We're buying oh. pumpkin Pop-Tarts. And we're buying that. Jim, imagine this movie except Yoo-Hoo Country. I want to get a Country. Yoo-Hoo tour. A, a pilk pilgrimage, if you will. <laughs> that's delightful. Dan so has Jim, this... When okay, did you, we should when... talk about the movie. Let's talk. Let's move back into the movie. I don't... We won't talk about pilk. My... <laughs> Pilk is a uh, half pe- Pepsi, half milk. If anyone, and that's all you need to know about delectable it. beverage. So, Jim, you're not a big wine guy, I take it. Then, no, I love wine. I t- I absolutely love it. Do and you? after I started, I, okay, when I started drinking, I watched this movie. I watched this movie when I was like 18 or 19. I started drinking when I was 17. Arrest me if you want, Government of Canada. <laughs> and um, 
I was drinking whiskey and Cokes up till then. And then when I watched this movie, I'm like, oh, let me try some wine. And I actually used to buy different types of wine and I get like three or four bottles and I go through them in a few weeks with friends and stuff like that. And I Jim tried was to refining his palate. I literally was trying to do that with, after I watched this movie, because this movie isn't really about wine. It's about like, because this movie, the title sideways, that's reference to being drunk. It's about like broken older people and how to like move on after you've reached a, like middle age. Basically that's what this movie is about. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I was just like, yeah, I, this is really interesting. And it, Miles in the movie is kind of fucking insufferable the entire <laughs> time. Because he'll come and talk about wine. He'll say, like, the tannins and they and oh they did X, God, Y, and Z and it yeah. tastes like this or that. But, you know, once you drink enough wine and shit. Some people you, are like that. That's a real yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm like that. I, I think that, you know, I'm not like a pretentious prick. Well, you have to get someone else's opinion and tell, ask if I'm a pretentious prick or not. But we'd be drinking wine and I'm like, oh, yeah, this tastes kind of like this or that. And we'd look up the vintages and stuff like that. But i don't really do that anymore but it was definitely something to explore it's just like you know me and i i know you and i like watching movies about different things like i don't think that i've watched a lot of movies about wine country or a lot of movies about just middle-aged people like looking through the relationship problems and stuff like that i don't think that's a common like popular fucking movie nowadays especially now that marvel's taking over but i've talked to tons of people and tons of people who are older too like in their 30s and 40s and stuff and sideways is like a big film yeah this made a lot of money that you were saying that that was interesting to me because i thought this was going to be one of those things that was not small but not big but i was doing some research and yeah it's it's like huge it won a bunch of awards and stuff yeah i think this is alexander payne's top film that he's made oh, I, I really think it is um i think he made let me look this up quickly but i think he made another movie that i really like called election jack cole in this movie is the sandman from yes fucking he is spider man yes he he directed this movie called election with reese witherspoon and matthew broderick that's the only other movie i'd say is comparable in quality to this like the same level of quality mm. but that's another one that's like exploded in popularity and stuff and the guy guy who played jack in this movie his name is thomas hayden church he played uh sandman spider-man 3 sandman in the new spider-man movie and guess what else he played dan jim what what did he play he played lobster johnson in hellboy oh, yes, 2019 Hellboy 2019 is pretty sick. It's a pretty cool movie. I wholeheartedly disagree, except for the Lobster Johnson part. I like Hellboy 2019. I f- it was a good movie because I don't remember anything that happens in it, which means it was a bunch of CG, and I don't it was remember. A, it was a bunch anything. of light and color and noise that Dan <laughs> that was bombarded was with for was about like, two hours. Was there like a werewolf or something? There was the Ben Diamo, the leopard man. Was there like a luchador scene? They were fighting yep. in a ring. <laughs> yep, they stole that from Hellboy Goes to Mexico. Yep. And there was like a he like rode a dragon or something. Yep, they stole that from the very climatic like twenty years after end scene of the Hellboy <laughs> comics. Yep. Ah, uh, what an epic movie! I hope they make a sequel. Le epic film. Jim, do you want to know some cool facts about this movie? I did some yeah. research. Hit it, hit me with it. I've never, I've never see. I I know this movie was popular because I've talked to people about it, and you know the DVD was popular because we watched the DVD and it had the. Uh, <laughs> the oh my god! It had the classic. It had the classic. It had the classic. You wouldn't download a car. You wouldn't download a car. You wouldn't steal a CD. Buying or or downloading movies online is illegal. It was epic. <laughs> That aged really well. It also had the classic 2000s ads where it's like, it's an ad for like 10 different movies and they yeah. just keep cutting scenes from, it's like a 20 minute long ad and you've basically watched one tenth of every movie they've shown off by the end. It's an ad to buy DVDs. Like, in, I don't know <laughs> about so you, but in 2003, funny. 2004, my family was still watching tapes. Oh and, my god. Yeah, they were still watching tapes and shit. So they still had ads on DVDs that were like, buy all these Please classic buy films the on DVDs. Same thing in like 2008, 2009, 2010. All the Blu-rays I have from that, they're like, now an HD yes, amazing yeah. quality. You can watch <laughs> all these films too. on Blu-ray. Oh, okay. Hit me, hit me Jim- with them facts. Jimbo facts. Obviously, this film drew a ton of increased interest into the Santa Ynez Valley. Is that how you say that? Santa Ynez? Santa Ynez? Probably not. Probably, probably Santa Inez. I bet the Y is silent. <laughs> All right. Um, it drew a bunch of increased interest. Also, Jack in the movie, or not Jack, Miles in the movie is known to hate Merlot and yes. like love Pinot Noir. It was like it's a recorded thing. It was like 20% higher. 
Pinot Noir sales soared the year after the movie came out by like nearly 20% in the Western US and I like overseas. It. And Merlot sales dropped like 10%. <laughs> I like Merlot. Merlot's nice and uncomplicated. Merlot's a red wine, right? Yeah. I don't well, know. I think 90% of what they drink in this movie is red wine. And that's what I like. Yeah, I don't think they reds. drink almost any white wine. No. I, guess what? I, I had to buy... Me and Dan are going to a get-together tomorrow at my friend Ian's place yes, for his birthday. Are. And guess what I bought? Jim, did you, buy a, did you buy a port? Did you buy a port wine? No, I did buy a port wine. That's different. That's fortified wine. I went to... When I went to... Yeah, well, before I went to your place, I went with Brandon and his mom to the liquor store. And his mom bought this bottle with a, with a yodeling lady on the front. Okay. And I was like, Mary Liz, what the fuck is that? And she was like, well, this is the cheapest bottle in the store. <laughs> and it tastes pretty good. And I bought it today and I had a glass with my family. And you know what? Brandon's mom, 10 out of 10. For $9, that's a good taste. And that's a... It was a what? Red wine? What? Yeah, it was a red. It was a Portugal. Yeah. Interesting. Jim, here's the other interesting Danny fact from this movie. And this one's actually interesting because it's very, very recent and it's kind of fucked. So in a 2022 study from the Journal of Wine Economics, it actually attributed sideways to the fact that there are lower quality Pinot Noirs now because of the increased like want oh for them God. after this movie. It led makers to blend low quality grapes with high quality grapes to just make more of it. Thus, just eventually having worse Pinot Noirs. That's 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 fucking. That's kind of wild. That's right? capitalism. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I read that and I was like, wait a sec, 2022, like recently, and I was like, yeah, this journal attributed that to the movie Sideways. So I, I this think must we... be a big movie in wine circles. Oh yes, totally. I think we've talked a lot about a lot about like cultural impact and and some funny parts from it. But how do you how do you feel about how the plot progressed in this? I film? thought it was good. It because felt the, like it's, the type of thing that it felt like you could know these people. You definitely yes. probably shouldn't be these people, <laughs> but it really felt like you'd be like, yeah, I knew a guy like this. I knew a dude who did this, and they felt normal. It was one of those movies that you can go back and watch at any point. Because there's no fancy CG, there's no fancy shit like that. It's just a movie about two people and how they deal with shit. A lot of Alexander Payne's films, except for downsizing, because that movie has weird fucking science fiction. They're all little tiny people. They're they're little... (laughs) Yeah. The movies are about, like, Midwestern, approaching middle-aged people. They're very, like, taciturn little movies about like social problems that's what the movies are about they're very relatable very realistic and stuff like that and that's why i think that they strike a chord so much downsizing Um, is just a little movie how uh how do do you (laughs) i'm remembering downsizing now i don't like it man (laughs) we'll do an episode on downsizing one day oh fuck that uh how how do you feel about like the way the characters ended up because this whole film um jack is being reckless like bro he, he, i don't know how he didn't get caught he, he meets this lady he's like i'm gonna get my nut of this trip and he meets this lady stephanie when they're going on a wine tour and then he carries on with her and they have sex and then it's she so introduces fucked. she he, she introduces him to her mother and her kid and he's like tucking his kid in her bed kids and playing calling with her, kid. her like daddy and stuff and like uncle, Papa uncle and jack shit. Yeah. uncle jack yeah that's what it is it's so fucked. and then she he doesn't even tell her and he's talking to miles and he, he's such a child that's what i'd say about jack is that he has such like he he only thinks about the immediate moment because he goes into this um trip and he tells miles like yeah her father my fiance's father's gonna get, try to get me in his business and maybe that's a good move for me and stuff and by day three he's like listen miles here's what it is i break off the engagement <laughs> i love me and you woman. move up here <laughs> we, we start a winery you design the wines i do the the advertising and then we do it like he's such a, a dreamer but <laughs> He doesn't tell this woman. She ends, she learns from Maya because Miles told Maya that he has a fiance or whatever, and she beats his face in. And then he oh picks up God, this woman yeah, at the does. bar. And this is this is my other favorite part of this movie. And, and how I how I know that when he can, Alexander Payne's such a great user of tone. Like he's such a great story crafter. Is that Jack goes home with this woman, and Miles goes Miles goes back to the motel. He's just sleeping, and Jack shows up at two a.m. or something, and he's naked. And Jack and he's laughing at Jack because Jack had to run naked because this woman's uh, like husband came home. 
And then Jack's like, but I left the rings there. And Miles is like, listen, your wallet got stolen. We don't have to worry about it. Like, whatever. And then Jack starts crying. And he's like, I know I fucked up. I know I'm a bad person. I know so I fucked stupid. up. So stupid. And, and it's kind of hard to watch. And he kind of manipulates Miles into helping him go back to the place. And this is such a weird thing, too. Is Miles goes back to where Jack was having sex with that lady. And he goes in. And I, when I first watched this movie, I thought the guy was killing her. Like, I thought that guy was <laughs> Jim fucking Jim didn't know what sex was. I didn't know what sex was. He's killing him. He's killing him. Someone <laughs> he's said ki- He's stabbing her with his penis. <laughs> uh, but he goes in there, and he gets in there, and they're, they're fully having sex. Like, there's two naked people in this movie, and they're having sex. And Miles rushes in, gets the wallet, rushes out, and this guy is chasing them in the car, and he's got his flopping cock as he runs down the street <laughs> after them. It's just like a like the tonal shifts in this movie, and that's what I really it's like very about weird. it. It's it's a very jarring film. Like it's a the kind of film that pulls you back into it because you're like, what the fuck is going on right now? It doesn't I, have a lot of time to let you rest. I was really expecting something to happen with Jack, but no, he goes home and then does marry his fiance and is apparently going into a great family life and is going to be a real estate mogul and stuff. And uh, Miles ends up going back to his teaching job. He's teaching, you know, fucking they're reading 51 dogs or whatever. Um, 15 dogs. 15 dogs. (laughs) Um, and Maya gives him a phone call and leaves a voicemail and is basically like, Hey, I read your manuscript. It's really good. Do you want to come back down? So she's obviously forgiven him from everything. I don't and, know if uh, she, she's forgiven him, but do you think like, she's called him letter. there to murder him? No, they, she wants to have a conversation because you know, that's extremely shitty because Jack, what Jack did was extremely shitty. Yeah. They were like friends girl. before that too. It, it's preface does. Yeah. And then for miles to go along with it and not, he lied by omission, right? Like oh miles yeah. Was just as culpable. He just didn't say anything about it. He just let it happen um so definitely they they probably go and have a conversation but i think it was very apt that jack was like he had this bombastic like having sex doing all this crazy stuff and then by the end he's like yeah i'll just schmooze it by like he lies and he gets through it and then it's very uh applicable to his character he's able to just not worry about it and get through it yeah and, and i feel like what happened with miles is very good too because he's such a nervous nelly and blah, blah, blah. he goes to this movie and then things break up with maya and he, and he sees his wife his ex-wife at the wedding and she's married and then she tells him he's she's pregnant oh he's yeah like, the breakdown and he drinks the fancy wine that he said he, he'd save in for a bad occasion and he made that day the special occasion where he drank that wine he and drank then, that wine out of a styrofoam cup yeah, at like a, at a, a taco a, a bell mcdonald's or something yeah. yeah and then he not he just knocks on maya's door and that's how it ends and i feel like that it's a good um, ending very very personal like slow romantic kind of ending was very good for miles and his character um yeah i i I like the way this film's themes and character you know progress is expressed it it was very it's uh, not only like i get that that scene where they're like i like the wine because it's it's got thin (laughs) skin you gotta treat it right in order to to get the best out of it like i get how that's a little bit kind of apparent care kind of basic but the other portions of this film really come together very well for me yeah i, I believe that as well how, how do you feel how did how did you, what did you think about this film before you went in because i imagine if someone said ah uh, yes uh, why a, a film about wine country uh, i you, thought yeah. it was going to be a a uh, sex having movie like a comedy movie i thought it was going to be a comedy movie like through a, through, like a bachelorette yeah like a boner yeah. comedy bachelorette party movie with two guys i did not expect the first thing to happen is to him go my wife left me time to drink <laughs> uh i could see how middle-aged people like this movie a lot and and jim who was a teenager who thought he he had seen everything and was a, a grizzled man had liked this film too. <laughs> I like yeah. it in a different way now. I like I like how funny it is. I like how unsurprising it is and how witty it is. But I definitely don't feel a lot of um, like I don't feel like I'm the same as these characters. Like I don't. Feel no, like I don't think I can relate. I can relate to them very well. Like I probably thought when I was younger. It's just a good movie. It's a good character piece. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, you, uh, it will be a movie, movie i i will watch this movie again i'm sure one day it's, it's, it gets a thumbs up from dan dan enjoyed it yeah uh we're cutting this episode a little short but i feel like 44 minutes we, it's normal 
we also watched this movie like a week and a half ago. So if there's something, you know, I wanted to say about it, I didn't say, I'll probably say If there's a third guy we're forgetting, maybe there's a third guy that goes around with them. Rolf, Rolf, the guy guy who drove the car around with them. (laughs) Oh, it was a very good movie. I will watch it again and it will probably stick with me and I'll think of it more and more as the years go on and then I'll watch it again. As your, as the as your dying neurons shut off in your brain, yeah, I'll you'll think, I'll of think miles. about sideways. <laughs> uh, I'm scared. Uh, what are we doing for next episode? Oh. Check out back. I don't like this because I have. I'm literally compiling. Uh, a list of information for the next pick of Shack Out Back. I already know what it is. I'm writing stuff down. I have it Are on the board and I'm ready to go. But I'm kind of scared as to what Dan's going to pick. Jim, I want to talk weird. I want to talk about oh, wacky no. and wild. Oh, Lord. I want to talk about cryptids. Cryptids? I want to oh, talk fuck. about the Big Feet and Dan, the Mothman Dan, Dan, and Dan, the Jersey You Devil. need to listen to the cryptid season of, of, of the Parapod. Of Parapod? You need to listen to it. It's only 10 episodes. They're only like 30 minutes or something. You need to listen to it. I'll send it to you. But Thank I'm you know, 150% Jim. into talking about cryptids. What cryptids? Chupacabra? Chupacabra, the Jersey Devil, the Big Feet. I want to talk about Little Green Men. I want to talk about Swamp Monsters of Louisiana. Mothman. The Water People of Missouri. Wendigos. Yeah, I want to talk about all that shit. Skinwalkers. I want to talk about all the weird cryptids and stuff. That sounds like fun. Uh, Yeah, that sounds like a damn good time. That's going to be the cryptid episode. That's going to be the spooky, scary cryptid episode. It's going to be Halloween in uh, April episode. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I was thinking about that. Uh, I think That'll that's be, it. I think that's uh, that wraps up our Friday evening in the shack. Yes, this is going to be a short edit for Jim. Jim's going to a party tomorrow with Dan. We're going to get, we're going to drink. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk, and then Jim's going to wake up Sunday morning and be like, "Fuck, I need to edit Shack out back," and that's going to be Jim's day. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, you can follow us at Popeye Barkin at Dan Sama. For the other guy who's not talking right now. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and at Shack Out Back Pod Shack Out is Back the Pod. Twitter one. All our art is done by CassieHDesign.com. The intro's by Lee Jackson, uh, who just did more music for Nightmare Reaper by Nightmare Reaper. Uh, you know, share us with your friends. Like us on YouTube. Like us on fucking Spotify. Like us on Deezer, whatever the fuck you listen to us on, on right now. And, uh, you know, send us, a, send us an email, send us a freaking you know, DM on Twitter. We'd love to talk to you guys. Um, yeah, just let us know what's happening. 100%, yeah. And, uh, Dan, you know what? You bring us out this week. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, uh, Jim, I was looking at uh, applying for my business courses for digital marketing, and I was wondering, I want to see how good the website that uh, Buzzsprout gives us, or not Buzzsprout, whatever the fuck we're with. Podbean. Podbean. I want to see how good the website is, if I can customize it and change a lot of stuff. I Other added that. Uh, oh, we got some sick new art from Brandon. Yeah, and that'll my be posted Jayden. on Twitter, I'm sure. Yeah, well, it's already on Twitter. It's, uh, oh, Brandon's it's the stuff. Yeah, right, bo- yeah, the profile picture and the banner. Where our Twitter's all souped up. It looks delicious. Nice as shit. Uh, yeah, follow Brandon at uh, bchen.art on ArtStation. We just Fucking need more than shit. four followers. If you listen to this, be a follower. Yeah, send us to your grandma. Get your grandma listening to us. Yeah, and, that's it, right. boys. Good night. All right, good night, everybody. Good night, darling. Goodbye, Jim. Bye-bye. Good night, Dan. Good night, everybody.